Right. Uh, ah, great. I'm still uh, live. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Ah. Well, thanks for the quick fix on the blown fuse or whatever it was. Okay. Uh, Just trying to find the mouse at the moment. But um, okay. So. Um, Yeah, just to just to finish on this slide then, there was the famous Gene Street competition uh, instigated by you and Bernie at Cold Spring Harbour meetings. And if you look at those clusters, they're all, uh, yeah, the median's about 35,000 there. So there were very, in 2000, there were very few low estimates. And these were the ones on, that you uh, that you could see from the l l literature. And they varied from about 120,000 Ah, okay, right, okay, ah, got it. Okay, so you've got this on the, uh, the these early EST estimates and rights uh, tr transcriptions, RT-PCRs, mouse comparisons, and the the old the original Solera upper limits uh, ESTs by Ewing and the famous ExoFish down to thirty one thousand. So these are all pretty high. Now the interesting thing is if you now on that basic idea that there was something that we were that there was a some kind of constitutive underprediction in in the eukaryotes. If you look at these, um, if you look at the updates that have happened over the years, in fact, on on Pombe, you've only got a uh, a three percent increase in 202, and of course, Cerevisiae, in fact, has gone down. These are actually last year's figures, but it, it's actually gone down by 8% since 1997, although I was talking to Viv from the, um, uh, from the FPAP, the Fungal Annotation Consortium, and it has actually blipped up a little bit, but it's gone through another reannotation. So it's still churning after all these years, and has now come up to just over 6,000. But it's still not a significant increase. Elegans, worm pep, yeah, going up slowly, but not a lot, and, and of course the, the Drosophila are actually also going down since since 2001. Now, uh, I got these figures, historical figures from 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 from, uh, from the the Unigene collection, and you used to get some in, some very useful statistics from this from their builds, but they've actually changed the, like a lot of pipelines. They've actually had to change their parameters recently, so you, you don't get quite the same numbers. But they did a um, a rapid, you can see from their accounts, the rapid growth on the mRNA submitted to the uh, mRNA submitted to the database. But if you look at this kind of clustered set, now these are mRNA clusters, not EST clusters, not the maximum EST clusters, but uh, uh, a very slow increase over about two years, and they appear to be plateauing out about 28,000. And these, of course, everybody knows, includes quite a few splice variants, and one or two, at least, uh, spurious off. My favorite spurious orf is in the three prime UTR of, of beta secretase, and it always amuses me because uh, human genome science has filed a patent on it as a secreted protein. Now, ensemble number, of course, it's fairly simple. It's just been flat all the, all the time. It's actually gone up by about a, another thousand or so uh, recently. But if we, on these last year's figures, we were actually going down. Um, we would, we was, we've actually seen a decrease over the last four years, and the, yeah, and the numbers happening underneath there were that we're um, we're slowly stamping more of the gnomes, of course. And there's this there's there's this key set which is the the novel genes, which I think are now defined that they are they have similarities but not identity to uh, RefSec or Uniprot entries. And of course, the exons per gene is going up, so genes have got longer, and of course, the alternative splicing has increased. Now, I uh, I tried to address this question of small open reading frames, which had, um, which was coming up quite a lot. In I I did a series of simple queries. I actually split what was then SP Tremble in in half into an old half and a new half. Uh, this was this was uh, this was pre-October and um, and post-October, and you'll see 
in the in the newer half, the proportion of small open reading going to human entries was actually going down. And if you if you selected by novel in the title, it was an even lower even lower number. So there was no evidence from this survey that, that there was an increase in smaller open reading frames. So summarizing the uh, summarizing the, the small open reading frame issue, you need this so-called triple postulate for um, for if you like undetectable small open reading frames, I, I, that there are, there are also failures in gene predictions, there are failures of homology detections, and there's an absence of transcription. So you need to postulate this kind of triple, uh, triple failure in order to say that there's, there's, there's thousands of these that we're not seeing. And as I say, from the previous queries, there's no database evidence for this. And the observation that only 1% of mouse genes had no detectable homology was contradicting the idea. And clearly, although small proteins, we know small proteins evolve uh, very more rapidly, there's no precedent that they would have such high KAKS values that you're completely losing ortholog sim similarities across, uh, um, across various clades. And it's a little bit contentious, but there are lots of signaling peptides, but in a, in, if you're talking big numbers, for these things to be much shorter than a thousand residues, they'd fall below the thresholds necessary to fold fold in order, to, in order to do useful things. And unlike the, the fascinating stories of the, of the bacterial unknowns we were hearing yesterday, there's no evidence of a de novo gene invention in the, in the high eukaryotes. Now this is a, this is a fairly complex slide of the International Protein Index, of which you can see the poster in your, uh, in your books. But I just want to point out a few of the uh, of a few of the features. The most inter interesting is in these, in the so-called non-redundant protein sets, which is here you've got the, yeah, this is the human protein index, is essentially those human entries in Swiss prop, just, just a very slow increase over all, all this time. The ref set collection also staying a very slow increase, but uh, staying ahead, being ahead slightly. And of course on ensemble here being, uh, being um, flat. Now the, the total IPI number has been kind of yo-yoing for all sorts of reasons, some of which are not entirely clear. A lot of these were the, these uh, uh, slightly loose XP protein predictions that the NCBI put in some years ago. So this kind of, so, so, so clearly the IPI project uh, shows you this slow increase in the truly non-redundant collections. Now, it seems there were quite a few papers that were claiming high numbers some years ago were essentially were using transcript skimming as the, uh, as the evidence for high numbers. So there was these exon arrays and gene arrays, RT-PCR, and uh, this was very nice oligotiling work. In fact, in this paper, they didn't claim high gene numbers. But if you're claiming uh, increasing gene numbers, I... I would propose it, it's actually incumbent on you to submit a full-length open reading frame to the public database before you can claim the discovery of, of novel proteins. And none of these publications actually did that. Um, so, and we know these are the these are the general features of, of gene anatomy. And of course, as we know now, since then, there's a lot of evidence for significant amounts of non or non-protein coding transcription across the whole of the gene, whole, whole of whole of the, the protein gene all of the human genome. So interestingly, the, the kind of hardest evidence or the, or the most solid suggestion that there could be a lot of some proteins that were actually missing comes from these um, highly curated individual chromosome reports. So at the time I did this, they, they actually exceed the ensemble genes by about 12%. But they have a finer, uh, they have a finer gradation of, of of categories. So if you took these up to the these so called um, these so called these so called putative genes where they can't actually put in a reading frame but they have some some uh, intron exon so that thing about repeat elements is a is a is an editing typo I'm afraid from last night. But these interestingly these chromosome reports are made at, at different times using different assemblies and sometimes you get as different forms of evidence and, and support, uh, as you can see by some quite differences in the results on the, 
simultaneous publications for chromosome 7. Now, at the moment, I'm not quite sure, probably through some portals, you can now do the Vega uh, cross mappings against ensembles. Now, Vega's sort of in concept pushing for a maximal transcriptome annotation of, of, of all transcripts, whereas ensemble sticks more to the proteins. So we'll see. Essentially, the final number will depend very much on the future status of these, uh, of these novels and putative transcripts uh, and as to how many of those are going to convert into, into coding proteins. Just quickly, this, uh, I think I'll actually, I'll, uh, it was some, some, uh, some SRS queries I did in, in 2003. I pulled out all the CDSs from, from uh, up to March, about 1500, and then search the word novel in the submittance line, novel plus novel in the PubMed title, um, and we had 11 people reporting novel genes uh, and, and describing them as novel genes. Eight of these had previous CDSs, and there were only two that didn't, and they, they both now in RefSec and the subsequent ensemble build. So, there's very, so that novelty didn't last very long. Now, the, we now have a lot of sampling for human proteins uh, by these large-scale protein mass, mass, mass spectrometry-based mass spectrometry based proteomics efforts, and um, these include now this, this, this set from plasma and, 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 and liver cells, but we don't see any verifiable data on prediction confirmation. Matthias Mann's papers did have some ensemble and some XP identifiers uh, but they were not they were not actually stable enough to follow up whether they whether they had actually stamped uh, novel gene predictions. There was a report by also from uh, Matthias Mann's group back in 2001 by Kaster, uh, where he had a he built a he, he confirmed a genome only peptide match. But this actually appeared from our throughput project later on in the same year as a as a, as a tremble entry. So wh whilst there is so there's no evidence of novel protein discovery so far in the high throughput human proteomics, but there is a caveat to this in, in the question of what available search space they have to use. But that's a kind of a, a technical issue which I can't, won't go into here. Um, so oh, I got these I got these slides in the wrong order. Um, updates. So these are updates in the sense that they're, they're, they're happening after after my after my paper came out. And clearly in October 2004, the Nature final, final draft, if you like, so they come down, uh, not, also not being very, very kind of uh, precise, but they come 20 to 25,000. Now, I found this interesting comment in the back of the, uh, at the bottom end of the, of the Nature dog genome paper. Now, if you, I'll read this out, because it, it's, it's slightly contentious, so I don't want to kind of over-interpret it, but I'll, 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 I'll read it out the way it is. So, the dog gene count is of, or the 19.3, is substantially lower than the 22,000 gene models in the current, in the current ensemble, and uh, this is quoted, for many predicted human genes, we find no convergence of a dog ortholog, so they're using the absence of dog orthology to infer that the, 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 the gene's not there, and this, saying much of the excess in the gene count is, is, is attributable to spurious genome predictions in the human genome. So this is by Michelle Clamp, of course, who's one of the uh, founders of the Ensemble Pipeline. Uh, the other updates, of course, in March of this year, Ensemble, uh, yeah, it's actually popped up a bit, okay, so we're up to, uh, up to nearly 24,000. And, of course, as you heard yesterday, the Swiss Rot uh, Human Proteomics Initiative has, uh, has notched up to up to, up to just over 14,000. So, to, to, just to conclude, if you like, the model eukaryotes clearly, this, 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 this expected or some, at some point predicted post genomic rise in, in, in protein genome hasn't happened. Uh, the ensemble number has been essentially flat since 2001. There's a set of, and there's this, there's this kind of, Rump of about 2,000, somewhere to two, two and a half thousand predicted genes that still seem to elude experimental verification. Now, it's, um, I don't know how much experimental focus there's been on these, whether people have specifically tried to clone or, or, or set these peptides in their mass spec scans, 
but maybe maybe some of these, a substantial portion of these, actually aren't real, and that's why they appear to be uh, refractory or, or, or hiding from the verification data. And it's now very clear that a lot of these early overestimates, they're explicable by, by the existence of vast amounts of non-ORF transcription. And post-genomic transcript coverage, uh, either in, in by, uh, uh, by the vast, whatever it is now, 200,000 human mRNAs, predominantly we're resampling known genes. The database submission of... of, of um, now, I'm not saying that, that we'll never find any more novel mammalian or human genes. That, 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 that clearly is not true, but I'm saying these are not likely to be big numbers, and they'll be very interesting as to when we do. Um, so the database submissions of truly novel genes, i.e. Not, not, not sequenced ever before, is slowing to a trickle. No evidence for cryptic small. Proteomics is not so far found in the approaches. So maybe the, uh, the Swiss Pro HPI team can think about popping their champagne corks when, uh, when HPI just hits, uh, uh, hits about 20,000. So I don't know what exactly when that's going to be. Um, so, it's, uh, okay, just some acknowledgements. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Paul Kersey for, the, for those uh, IPR update figures. Lucas Wagner from NCBI for, for the uh, imaging data. Many people, uh, both at uh, Swissprot and Claire's already been mentioned, who were very gracious in answering my queries uh, on their, their data collections and, and for discussions in those days with the, what was the Oxford Life Sciences Protein Discovery Time team. I have a few copies of this if you, uh, if, if you like copy the paper. And I also uh, express my appreciation for AstraZeneca to allow me to travel here to, to meet you all. Thank you very much. Any question in the audience? If there is no question, I thank again uh, Dr. Salmon.